Hey guys, I got um got a couple of comments over the last week or so about uh, a couple of things some people wanted to see. Um, some mainly being the difference between um, straight A's and A2 style assemblies. Uh, one thing that was brought up was uh, was the Y switch. Um, as you can see, the tracks actually stop kind of short, and without the Y switch, it kind of let's see, it kind of just finishes the track off and guides the ball into the accelerator. We have accelerators here. Uh, accelerators are boosters, regardless. I have seen A-style um, return tracks with boosters, but usually have the Y switch. Uh, we also usually hook a spring to them and keep them urged on the left side because, <clears throat> as you can see here, the return track's a lot shorter on the even side, and a lot of times the lighter balls have a problem pushing that Y switch out of the way. Uh, so that's one thing. Another another big difference, obviously, is the, the style of the return tracks, as you can see. They look quite a bit different than uh, straight A style. Also, the lift rods, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I went into a center not too long ago that actually still has original A style lift rods, and they're actually a lot taller than these are because the ball actually came back at a higher level because it was a gravity return, and as you can see, it dips and gets down lower. That makes its way to the accelerator, so that's one thing. Um, and here is the uh, the preference system, which blocks out the even lane. If two balls come up the rods at the same time, as it comes up the odd lane, it'll flip the lever up, and that arm will come up and lock this top arm with the bumper and keep the ball here until it passes. Um, that's that's one difference. Um, I also had a question about the um, the shotgun or rake trip assembly, whatever the proper name of this is for it. We all call it the shotgun. Um, on A's, there's a, a quick drop kit that actually has a little solenoid on uh, on a full A2 style. If you look down here, you see the cushion shot there. There's this rod that goes all the way down to the cushion comes up here to a little triangle plate and then the diagonal rod goes all the way up to the top here. This is your adjustment. Right here is two seven sixteenths knots. You just twist it, a little turnbuckle to adjust the gap in there. It's supposed to be like a sixteenth of an inch or something like that. This one it's pretty close. It looks pretty good. But what happens is as the ball impacts the cushion, it pushes forward. And right here, it pushes this arm out of the way. And these springs, which are pulling down on the right lift shaft. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, the ball impacts the cushion and actually put a gap here. Well, the springs to pull down just a hair. And what that does is, if I can get in here, this bracket is attached to the rake lift shaft and it gives it, allows that little lever to move, push that roller back and it'll trip your shotgun. And um, that's, that's the A2 style setup. Uh, I've never seen the A's up close and personal, but from what I understand there's just a little solenoid up there that'll get your rake down. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, another couple of questions I had was about um, about detection height, how it works. Um, that's a really bad spot to try to get at. I don't even know if I could do it with the deck up. I'll probably have to drop it down. But um, there's a few basic uh, detection heights. It's all based on on deck height, how far how far down the deck actually goes. Um, if the deck goes down on a, what they call a short stroke to detect and it travels down uninterrupted, it's it's a strike and uh, it'll allow it to set new pins. If that travels interrupted just slight, I believe there's like a two inch difference maybe, you'll hear the, the deck will actually thud a little bit because the standing pins get in its way. And it'll detect standing pins and close the scissors and respot the pins. Um, there's also an out of range detection which is obviously 15 feet off of the deck as it hits the top of the pins. I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, and there's also a second ball or what they call a high strike detection. 
I've shown in my other videos here. You got your deck holding hook and the pin that's on that deck post. On second ball, that hook will be down. It'll grab it and not allow the deck to lower. But actually what it does is it detects a strike, which is what allows the, the deck to shift and set pins. Um, I also have one other question about uh, what would happen if you ran uh, if you ran 30 pins in a machine. Um, if the bowlers didn't hit any pins, you'd be fine because you could fit 23 or 24 between the turret and the cross conveyor and a few in the pinwheel, but the biggest problem with running that many pins is there'd be pins down at the bottom and the ball wouldn't be able to exit the machine properly. But, uh... I'll put all the pins up top just so you can see. I'll put on the second ball and cycle it. See you on the hook there. Bring it out of 180. I'll hit the 180 link. It'll set an empty deck. You could just imagine if there's 10 pins down there. You'll see it'll run with no issues. All the pins will fit up here just fine. Turtle empty and then refill. And then once the deck is full, we'll go into a restricted drop. I won't drop a second set. There's the first pen. Restricted drop and the extra pin stays on the cross conveyor. That's all done be, uh, by the blocking fingers, which are right there. Can't really get a good shot. There's a little probe on the bottom of the five pin chute, and there's two fingers. One is actually down right now, that's the full deck finger. The other one's actually up because that's the one that goes down when the deck is down so it doesn't drop pins while the deck's not up. But as you can see, you could probably sometimes you could fit. There are two pins back here on the cross conveyor. If this if the second one comes up, it'll stop because it'll hit the rollers here. And then a few of them can sit in the pinwheel. As long as they're not down there blocking the ball travel, it would work just fine. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you. Let's see if I can show you. The deck almost has a little bounce to it when it comes down uninterrupted. I got a shot of this for you. We set it again. You'll see. The, you'll hear the. You'll hear the deck actually thud as it, the uh, tops of the pins hit the deck pads, and the scissors will close and it'll respot. The assembly for the um, the other blocking finger I was talking about that controls when the uh, the deck is down that goes up and right here that's your detector rod that connects to the deck lift shaft and up to the detector and that's that's what tells the detector where the deck is it's kind of a tough spot to get in let's see if I can run it run it down to 270 and stop it and get a better shot for you flashlight here. That's your detector rod. It runs all the way up into the detector itself. And as you can see that I've shown this part before in another video regarding deck height. This is the deck lift shaft back here. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Um, I also had a question about um, out of range pins. Um, basically if you don't have the kits like we do, which are in the detector right here, these are the kits. There'll be a big hook at the back of the machine. 
when it encounters an outer range pin, it'll stop at 90 degrees with the deck sitting on the pin. And um, you'd have to clear all the deadwood and uh, also pull the hook to re-engage the clutch. Uh, what this does, it blocks the, the rake hook out, which is up there. Right there. That's what raises and lowers and controls when your rake sweeps. Um, and it just keeps the clutch going. It'll just lift everything back up. During lead time, you still get some deadwood calls, but it's great during open bowling because you don't really have to worry about anything. They don't really care. They just throw the ball. It just saves you a trip to the back for nothing, really. Uh, I hope that answers your question. I want to thank everybody. Um, I'm glad you guys find this kind of stuff interesting because it's been a fascination of mine since I was young. And uh, keep the questions and comments coming. I'll be glad to film, you know, anything, anything I can. I've seen a uh, handful of new su subscribers coming in, which is which is always nice. It's it's nice to know that you guys appreciate it. You know, you give me likes and subscribe and comments and that kind of stuff. So I just want to thank all of you for that. And uh, anything else, you can drop a comment, private message, whatever, and I'll be glad to do whatever I can for you. All right, guys. Bye.